Bob, can you review something that's not a gaming laptop? Yeah. Check this out. Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. Meet HP's 14-inch Envy. It has a factory-calibrated, flicker-free, 1920 by 1200 resolution IPS display. Now, this particular model has the optional touchscreen with multi-gesture and pen support. Color calibration was at 100% standard RGB, 77% Adobe RGB, 400 nits of brightness. The body is stamped aluminum, silver in color, and weighs about 3.5 pounds. Inside is Intel's 11th gen low power 4 core 8 thread i5 with the Iris XE integrated graphics. The dedicated GPU is the NVIDIA GTX 1650 Ti Max Q. There's 16GB of dual channel memory that is soldered to the motherboard, so spec yours wisely. There's a 256GB NVMe storage that can be replaced, and the Wi-Fi 6 card is soldered to the board as well. Links below for this Amazon SKU or customizable options at HP, all links below. The 63 watt hour battery lasted well over 12 hours for video playback at 50% brightness, but my personal use over the last month was at maximum brightness and this would get me through a 5-6 to six hour YouTube day writing scripts and answering messages while taking mental breaks just scrolling around. In a pinch, if you need more juice, just close the lid, plug it into the power supply for about 30 minutes and you'll get 50% of your battery charge back. Now when it comes to fan acoustics, during these basic tasks, it was very low, if any. It's a very quiet laptop, super chill, and it does not drive me crazy with random fan noise. Now attempting to extract as much noise as I could, I ran the 10-minute Cinebench R23 CPU stress test, and it took about 5 minutes before the fans actually capped out at 42 decibels. Now this was a maximum performance profile where the CPU will actually sustain 35 watts. Here are the test scores. Since this Envy has the NVIDIA 1650 Ti Max-Q, surely gaming on this would make the fans on this little laptop scream. No, no, the results were actually the same, 42 decibels. Alright, then clearly it has to be super hot. You would think, but no. For a laptop this size and part selection, its dual fan cooling solution is doing a really good job. Now combined loads, such as gaming, offered solid thermal performance with the 1650Ti in the mid-60s and the CPU rarely reaching 80 degrees Celsius. Under this load, keyboard temps are mild, well under 40 degrees Celsius. Overall, nice job. Now by no means is this a gaming laptop, and the response time of this touchscreen feels too slow compared to the labeled gaming laptop. But this is a laptop that I'm looking at as a total package versus a gaming device while showcasing worst case scenario for heat and noise. Now let me show you what I mean by total package starting with the laptop life things. One hand opening is fairly easy, nice hinge tuning. I'd like to see the front edge come in at an angle like this ZBook to allow easier opening. There's a fingerprint reader for Windows Hello. The glass Synaptics Precision trackpad feels very high quality. It's tight and clickable across its entirety. The keyboard is great, and I think you'll find other reviewers backing this up. It has good spacing, nice travel, and a firm deck area. Those concerned about the power button location and accidental sleep or shutdowns, don't fear. You'll actually have to hold this power button down for that to occur. Now, silver keys with two-stage white backlighting means low visibility in the daylight. To improve this, turn off the backlighting. It works great in the dark, of course, but I'm still on the fence about the silver key cap color choice. It looks nice. But in practice, I think I still prefer black keys for better contrast with white backlighting. Now, port selection on the left includes a headphone mic combo port, USB 3, an HDMI, and a Thunderbolt 4 that will also allow USB-C charging. On the right includes a microSD card, another USB 3, and the barrel power port. Supplying the juice is a 135 watt power supply. I was surprised to see a 135 watt power supply given these parts, but further testing at gaming load reveals wattage that suggests this is the proper power supply. Now, HP has a focus mode that will keep the selected window in focus while other windows dim to save battery life and ultimately keep you focused. At the top is the webcam and built-in microphone. This was impressive. Check this out. 720p webcam and microphone built into the top of the bezel. It does feature an electronic shutter, so you can disappear like that. 
I like the microphone. I think the microphone is spectacular. It's not really picking up any ambient noise. I have an electronic space heater running maybe two to three feet away from this laptop. And then our HVAC system right now is running the heater in the house. And it's obnoxious in here. It just is. Keyboard strokes. I mean, overall, I like the webcam and I really like the mic. Maybe increase the resolution, but otherwise, good usability here. Nice job, HP. Now on a side note, while in clamshell mode as a docking station, this Envy can still breathe thanks to the bottom panel design. To top it off, the Bang & Aloofson speaker audio on this particular Envy is loud and clear. I have particularly enjoyed it even more on a laptop that does not have obnoxious fan acoustics. Have a listen. This is a very well-rounded, good quality device. Now, sure, we can get an HP Omen for roughly the same cost as this. Let's say this SKU roughly 1200 US dollars, right? But if I know 10 people that are in the market for a laptop, guess what? One of them want the Omen, the other nine want something like this. There's more to laptop life than just gaming, which, kind of goes against what my channel has ultimately been representing over the last few years. But hopefully you can look past that because I most certainly can. The HP NV14 is a good device, one month in, and I am not dissatisfied. All right, folks, that's going to do it. Hopefully you enjoyed my review of this machine. If you have any questions, comments, fill it up. I want to see what you have to say. Thanks for watching.